I always wanted to know why things happen. Identifying the source of an effect seems so critical to our understanding of the world. It is about extracting the truth. But there's more about it than just satisfying our curiosity. Our decision-making relies on it. Not only for our individual lives, but also on a much larger societal scale. This relationship between cause and effect is called causality. It is the key to explain how and why things happen. There's this book. It's called The Book of Why. It describes the hierarchy of causal relationships. There are three levels of it. The lowest one is association. It is about what we see and what conclusions we can draw from that. It is about correlations, which are different from causations. Like on a hot day, when ice cream sales and the occurrence of sunburn go up, we can observe that this change goes hand in hand, but it's not that one is causing the other. It is merely a correlation that has the same cause creating it. The second level is intervention. It is about what we do. Imagine we are testing the effect of a drug. And we give it to only half of a group of people. We can observe the effect of that drug in comparison to the group that didn't receive it. If you do it right, that procedure can be incredibly helpful to isolate the effect that comes from that drug specifically. To not falsely account any developments to it that would have happened even without it. The highest level is called counterfactuals. It is about imagination. It is about what makes us human. I think it embodies what most of us do all the time. To ask the what if questions. Real reasoning for any layer can only be obtained by having information of that layer or the layers above available. Simply observing the world is just not enough to truly understand it. To actually take advantage of the highest level, it is necessary to generate a structural equation model. It is a method to describe the relationships between different variables. An arrow means that A is causing B. There are three building blocks that can occur in such a diagram, and I feel like they have changed the way that I view the world a bit. The first one is a mediator. A mediator modifies an effect. It occurs in questions like if drinking more water leads to better concentration. While there are direct causes like routine and refreshment that contribute to it, an increased hydration might be seen as the mediator here. The thing that changed my understanding the most is number two, the confounder. Let's look at an example for this. Imagine regular exercise is causing improved sleep quality. There might be something lurking in the background of all of this, which is directly affecting cause and effect. Like overall health. Such a cause does not have to be necessary, but at least contributory. A better overall health is likely to make it possible for us to exercise regularly, as well as give us better sleep quality in the first place. So when considering how one action affects another, we can't ignore the things that influence both of them at the same time. The last of the basic components is the collider. Let's take sleep and caffeine consumption, for example. They both are likely to affect our work performance. While the one goes up and the other down, we still might achieve the same results, at least short term. So if not controlling for one, which basically means keeping all values but one constant, there is no way to tell the real effect of the variable we want to investigate. No matter how chaotic the world seems sometimes, it might be a very complex system, but it's not random. There are causes that have effects. And understanding those relationships will help us to bring order into this madness. Any rational conclusion is based on a proper interpretation of cause and effect. And without rationality, progress is up to chance. Let's not leave it up to chance. <laughs>